Hey YouTube, I wanted to do a short video on the modifications I made to the Pelican Catch 100. I know there's a lot of videos on the boat itself, uh, so I won't get into that too much. Uh, just the modifications I've made uh, in case some of you guys want to make some of the same mods. So uh, we'll get to it real quick. I'll kind of start with the nav lights up front here. I know they're not... Uh, mandatory by any means on a kayak but I figured I might be out at night or early in the morning uh, sometime so I went ahead and put them on uh, got the white uh, light there at the back and the red and green nav lights up front here the electronics for all that is down in this hatch uh, every circuits on a different fuse so the nav lights are on a fuse I added also some uh, just some inside lighting, uh, green lights, uh, if you just need some ambient light, and white lights if you need some brighter lights to uh, change lures or take a fish off or whatever. Um, so we've got two green and two white up here, two green and two white back here at the back, uh, down by the box here. It kind of shines into the box in case, in case you need to get back in there. Uh, while we're talking about lighting uh, the battery for the lighting is right here and the wiring goes down into the hull uh, right under that uh, little cable guide right there uh, it's faced down uh, hopefully so water won't get in it there um, the switches are also up here I 3d printed all these little mounts where these switches and all the cable uh, cable guides go down through the, the hull of the boat. Uh, the, water pr the switches are supposed to be waterproof as well, so we'll see how long they last. Uh, the little lights uh, here at the side are actually for uh, trailer lighting, uh, like on the marker lights on the outside of semis or any, any trailer for that matter. So that's where they came from. Uh, so I got those on Amazon. I got the switches on Amazon. Uh, we'll come back here to the back. Uh, we got this box at Home Depot for like nine dollars, so that was a good deal. Um, I did have to make these washers to hold the hooks on, so I 3D printed those washers and I 3D printed these uh, black washers up here to hold the the uh, rod holders on, uh, one on each side there. Uh, while we're at the back here, I did put a skeg on it. If you have a, a a Catch 100, I highly recommend putting some sort of skeg on it. I know you can buy them on the uh, internet at various places, uh, but I went ahead and made this one. Uh, raised the handle up here, uh, just so I could continue to use the handle if needed. And 3D printed these risers. And I also 3D printed these, uh, or this, uh, skeg mount. Uh, the yellow pieces here you can uh, use to tighten down uh, when you're traveling uh, so it doesn't just fall fall by itself. Um, the skeg blade itself uh, was made from a piece of cutting board and I believe it is nylon. I did drill and insert some steel pins up inside of here to give it some weight. Um, it was kind of floating on its own without the weights in there, so that took care of that. So the, so the duration of this gig, uh, you just have to make sure that this is loosened up uh, before you go out. And then uh, from the seat here, you can just uh, grab this, this rope here. And it's got a hook up here for the up position. And another hook back here for the down position. So you just so you just pass the hook. And it's kind of tight, and then the skeg goes down into the down position while you're out in the water. Uh, makes the boat really go straight. Uh, not so much that you can't steer it uh, with normal paddling, but uh, you can actually. Uh, get on a heading and maintain that heading uh, without uh, you know having to correct all the time for the direction you want to go. Um, 
if I talk about the battery um, placement is right here and it's a 12 amp hour battery uh, 12 volt of course uh, seems to hold up for several days uh, before I need to charge it um, we've got a uh, anchor system in here I don't have an anchor trolley but I do have an anchor and I 3d printed this box for it just to hold it in there it's pretty much a standard anchor for small boats or kayaks uh, let's see I think that's about it back here let's go to depth finder fish finder next it is a hummingbird helix 5 uh, side imaging and navigation unit seems to work out real well I highly recommend that um, I've got all the cables that go down through the hall one of these is power and of course the other one runs to the transducer on the other side uh, so we'll come across here and right now the transducer is uh, mounted the way it is when I'm out on the lake uh, seems to work out really well uh, again, the cable guides take the wiring down into the hall, up around the front, and then back over to the unit. Um, I made it so you could uh, do this while you're out on the water, because a lot of times you put in the, the water too shallow to, to have this down. So you just loosen this up, press this button. You just press on that, pull this up, flip it around down in and it snaps and then when you tighten you set it up in this guide up here and when you tighten this down it stays in that guide now for traveling I take this around and flip it over a couple times and that holds it up inside of here really well and uh, I did 3d print this little guy on the side here it uh, helps hold it so that the uh, transducer is actually facing forward when it needs to be uh, before it was kind of canted in too much so it wasn't looking exactly side to side it was kind of at a diagonal uh, but that that seemed to fix that so that's working properly the location I added to the kayak was these uh, these little lanyards that uh, actually clip up here to the rods to hold them in place uh, learned the hard way uh, casted uh, one right out of the holder one time and it's still at the bottom of the lake so uh, lesson learned there was to buy these lanyards and uh, clip your stuff in so they work out work out really well I think that's about it except for the trailer I guess I figured I might as well show you how we show you how we take it off Now the straps are off and it just uh, pushes off the back. All right. So I had a, a problem with uh, being at these state parks uh, and my wife's kayak and my kayak wouldn't actually fit in the back of the truck side by side. 
Plus I had to take all the gear out uh, every time you wanted to go out fishing and every time you came back from fishing. So I decided I'd try to make a trailer. Uh, that way you can take it right down to the water, get it in the water, go fishing, come back, put it right back on the trailer and you don't have to take anything out uh, between trips or anything if you don't want to. So this is what I did. Um, I used uh, some of this uh, steel tubing uh, for the, the main axle here and, it, and I welded up this steel box and cut holes in the sides there and ran that all the way through and then welded on the inside and outside here uh, to make that an axle. The, uh, well, kind of an axle, it's just a, a uh, pipe that runs between them, I guess. So the actual axle is probably what you'd call this thing down in here. Um, I did weld this uh, quarter inch piece of steel plate uh, onto both sides. Uh, and then drilled a 7 8 hole in that plate and put a 7 8 inch uh, bolt through it and I can't remember the length on that it might be 7 or 8 inches and then welded that bolt on the back side of that plate as well um, got these uh, utility tires at uh, Northern Tool and I think they were like $50 each, maybe $49.99 each. Uh, Seem to be holding up really well. And then I welded this uh, piece here on the front. It's an inch and a half inside diameter. I welded that to the front here and then put these pins through everything so I can take this thing apart and put it back together uh, when I get to the campsite and then when I get home to put my kayak on, I can use it at home as well. So, seems to be working out really well. I did uh, use this all summer, and let's see, yeah, come on here. Put these uh, foam pieces on there just to give it some cushion while it's sitting on there. This this piece here actually fits up in the in the uh, hull of the boat. And then you see here where the two pieces have kind of been pushed down here. That's where the, the I'm not sure what you call them, the uh, boat hulls kind of sits on it right down there. And it also sits on it on this spot here, so kind of in, hits it in uh, multiple spots there. Uh, to make it more user friendly, I actually made this mount a separate piece so that uh, I didn't have to stick with one long pipe. So I've got the axle is one piece. The next pipe that comes up to up to here, and then they all join inside of this piece here. So this 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 one here runs up to the front of you know where the ball hitch is, and it's just got a standard uh, one and seven eighths. Uh, ball on a two inch mount tongue here and standard safety chains or whatever there to not that I can drive it on the road or anything but I just go ahead and put them on just just in case but that's all I've done for a trailer it seems to be working out really well um, not sure about these rollers yet I 3d printed these um, does seem like the heat might be getting to them a little bit I just used uh, PLA which isn't that heat tolerant, so it's pretty low, low heat to get that to print. So I may end up reprinting these in a uh, PET G or something that's a little more heat resistant. So that's the trailer, and it seems to be working out really well. Um, like I say, I can, I can bring the, the uh, camper on the back of the truck like normal, and I can take this trailer down and stick it in the bed of the truck. Uh, while we travel and of course the kayaks go on top of the truck so it seems to be working out really well so I think that's about it uh, as usual any questions uh, leave them down in the comment line have fun